I'm back with Caitlin. Caitlin, I talked to you last week. Uh, how have you been doing in that week? Um, well, that Saturday with the three stabbings that were going on, um, come to find out, my dude was the first one that had gotten stabbed. I was told it was over some kind of rig or something. I don't know, I wasn't really there, but they stabbed him in his juggalo. His heart rate was already up, so it was like 30 seconds or less. I guess they just seen him, I, he's like stepped off the curb and then uh, he just collapsed. He was, they said that he was dead on scene. Um, I, I had like looked on someone's phone to like confirm that it was him because everyone was saying it was Danny Cordova, whoever that is. I don't know who that is, but then it was weird because I met him like three days after the incident, and I, I don't know why I wanted to, but I just wanted to take off the motherfucking thing. It was because I was mad that he he was still alive. My condolences for your loss, okay? And then, like that same night, I got a puppy around the same time. What's the name of your puppy? I named him after Daniel. Obvious. <laughs> How long were you with Danny? The four out of five years I was here. Longest relationship I've been in, to be honest. And I've never even lost anybody before, so I don't know. It seems unrealistic. You didn't do nothing to deserve anything like that. How old was Danny? He was 34. He's the one that bought Bella before Bella went missing. These streets are super vicious. There's nothing nice out here. Good things don't happen out here. Bad things happen every day is what I've noticed. You know? Caitlin, that's why you got to get out of here. Don't you miss your family, your brother, and he's married and he has kids. So you have, you know, nephews and nieces, right? Um, I haven't talked to my brother. Since how long? Since the last time I was on McDowell on 55th. So was that a year ago? Several months ago, probably. Several months ago? When you had a conversation with your brother, like, well, how, how does that go? What, what, what do you guys talk about? Um, well, last time I got in contact with him, he said that I just need to get clean, that he has an open house for me. He has a room for me. Because a lot of shit that's been going on, he didn't even know about me. He was really surprised in that I had called him. He thought I was dead. Because me and him are the only things left in the family that we really do have. And he's taken care of me since I was a baby. How often do you re reach out to your brother? Once a week? Once a month? Whenever I actually have a phone. But everyone keeps stealing it. Not a lot of honesty out here, right? There's not a lot of honest people out here, right? They're gonna take your stuff and sell it and your, your supposed friends out here, right? So if your brother's offering you a room and, and he wants to help you, like what is the addiction that makes it hard for you to accept that help? It's not about like accepting it, it's just the fact of actually taking the first step and going. What makes you so hesitant to go? Being sick all the time. Withdrawals? I guess there was two other stabbings, one over here, a guy named Caveman got stabbed in his neck and the back of his head. 
suffering from severe injuries. Another guy, I'm not too sure what happened with him either. But I heard, I think I know who it was. Because they had, they had done the same exact thing I was told that happened to Danny. And there's at least six that do it. And, and they just watch their surroundings. It's crazy, they look just like us. I should have known. So it's like uh, people that are out here on the streets, homeless. These motherfuckers have never been seen before. They're new. They're just targeting people. They're looking for prey. Obviously, right now, their heads are hot as I don't know if they've gotten locked up or yet. Last time I heard, the investigation was still going on. How do you plan on staying safe while you're out here? I don't even know. I really don't. I noticed I was being followed. And I'm not the only one that notices. Security and a QT worker had seen it, too. They're nothing but fucking pure evil, dude. I swear to God. You've had uh, your little puppy for a week? Yeah, a week today. You like having dogs, huh, with you? You like to be responsible for, for doggies? Um, I think the reason why I got that dog is because then, you know, that, was, that dog was going to keep me on my ten toes. Because if I didn't have that dog, I don't, I don't know where I would be or what I'd be doing right now, to be honest. Or alive. That dog's the only thing that's keeping me going, sadly. Just remember that you have your brother, okay? He has a room at his house to keep you safe and warm and you can shower and eat and, and be part of the family. You won't be subjected to being out here in the streets and suffering through all this crap out here with all these knuckleheads that don't care about you, okay? Just remember that, you know? A lot of, a lot of family don't, doesn't, do not offer that. Lots of family don't offer help and support, but I'm glad that he's, he does. Hey sister, you know, you might not be ready today, but just know that when you are ready, I have a room so that you can come and live with us and, and I can help you transform your life. Right? Because I've been talking to you for how many years? A long time, right? And uh, nothing changes. It's been three years, right? Nothing changes. No, it only got worse. It's getting worse. It's not going to get better. So now what? You know, you have to make the decision and be like, damn, it's going to hurt a little bit. But in the long run, it's going to be better. I don't have to deal with all this crap that I've been dealing with for years. Right? It's true. Just try it. You're gonna have to try it one of these days. Before, uh, you, so I was at the store and you approached me. Uh, you said, "Hey, I saw your car, so I came in here and looking, for, looking for you." So I was, I didn't, I, I was a surprise. What, uh, what were you up to? What were you doing before you saw me? Um, I've just been like sitting around, dude, watching my surroundings can't really do anything, can't trust nobody out here right now. You have to be on guard, huh? Because you don't know what people's intentions exactly. are. Exactly. Do you think uh, leaving the area might help? I don't know. I'm going to give you a... Uh, another band okay I'm gonna give you another wristband just remember if uh, you go to the hospital just let them know that I'm your emergency contact they can find me through that email and um, I'm gonna give you my card or my number on it so you can call me if you need a ride or to your brother's house or uh, gonna borrow my phone or you uh, want something to eat just let me know, okay? So, Caitlin, thank you very much for talking to me. Again, I my condolences for the loss of Danny. Uh, may he rest in peace and, 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 and 
and think about the good memories and honor his legacy because he wouldn't want you out here forever. He would want he you to get want better. Me out here, he doesn't want you, yeah. So let's 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 honor his legacy by saying, hey, you know what, Danny? This has been a wake up call. I'm gonna get better. I'm gonna I'm gonna get well so in, in honor of your memory, okay? So you should really think about that, okay? Please stay safe. Okay? When you go to sleep, sleep with one eye open because it's dangerous out here, right? Very dangerous. Especially to, uh, you know, a young woman that's alone now, basically. And they're probably going to know that you're alone, okay? So, uh, Kaylin, stay well. We'll talk soon, okay?